Uh, here are solutions to perfect problem seven for Math 111. Uh, let's see, I'm curious if shooting underhand has an effect on people. Effect will be important. I don't know if it's effect or effect, but whatever. This word here is important. This tells us that it'll be a two-tailed test. Um, who have never played basketball to test this hypothesis, I randomly select 100 people. And 100 that have never played basketball and have them shoot a free throw underhanded. I find that 35% of them make their free throw. So of my sample, 35% make it. In other words, p hat is 0.35. I know that normally 40% of all non-basketball players make their free throw. So what that tells me is p not equals 40%. Um, this information here will be important. Let's see, so state the null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis, maybe I'll start with our alternative hypothesis, is that p is not equal to 40%, 0 0.40. And our null hypothesis is that p, in fact, does equal 0 0.40. In other words, that the proportion of the population, if they all shot underhanded, um, that the proportion of the population would shoot exactly 40% or would not shoot 40%. Um, so I know that in my sample, 35% uh, made their free throw. But the question is, um, the population that this sample is representative of, does that equal 40% or not? Okay, um, and it might be worth writing here that that is two-tailed. You don't have to write that, but it's helpful for later on. Um, so tell, calculate the test statistic. The first thing to know is that we use z instead of t. The reason this is a z statistic because we're only estimating one thing. We're only estimating p. We're not estimating mean and standard deviation. We're just estimating p, which is all we need to estimate all that stuff. Um, the formula for this, let's see, one way to write it is like this. I guess this should be the square root of. Get to that in just a second. There we go. Um, is this thing right here, which looks like a huge mess, but really all we're saying is how far was our sample proportion above the um, above what we would have expected maybe if shooting underhand doesn't make any difference at all. So our sample proportion was 0.35. So it's 0.35 under in this case, what we'd expect. Um, but really we want to know how many standard deviations, not how many percentage points. So what you got to do is find the standard deviation. Maybe this is worth writing that the standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Um, and we have all these numbers. Uh, let's see, we'll use p0, p naught, which is this 0 0.40. So we got 0 0.4 times 0.6 divided by 100, and then the square root of that number. And let's see, if you put that into a calculator, you get, what's that, 0.24 divided by 100, and then the square root of that, oops, I'm not very good with this calculator, square root of that is equal to 0 0.0489, so you got negative 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.04898, 898, wow, so something like that. Um, and so negative 0 0.05 divided by that is equal to negative 1.02. One point, yeah, with rounding we'll get to negative 1.02. So my test statistic is negative 1.02. So now I want to sketch a graph. So I got my normal distribution here. Um, it's a two-tailed test, so I'm going to have a rejection region on each side. This is a Z distribution, so to have 95% confidence, I know that I need to go out 1.96 in this direction and 1.96 in this direction. And then my test statistic, I get, whoops, um, 
as negative 1.02. So negative 1.02, it's right around there if zero is in the middle. And the important thing to notice is this is not in the rejection region. So I would say test statistic is not in rejection region, maybe because so we don't have sufficient evidence Try to write as quick as I can, sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Um, and that's the end of the first problem. I move on, I think there's a second one here. All right, second one, I'm gonna further investigate uh, the effect of underhand free throw shooting. So what I have here is a two sample, a dependent two sample test. So the idea is here's how many free throws you make Normally, here's how many you make if you're underhanded. I think each person shot shot 40 free throws. Wow, so they did pretty poorly here. Um, but I guess that could happen. So 10 minus 10. So what I want to do, what you want to do in cases like this, is you want to create another column that's the difference. So 10 minus 10 is 0. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. 10 minus 4 is 6. 14 minus 5 is 9, 11 minus 4 is 7, 12 minus 6 is 6, probably screw up one of these at some point, um, maybe be smarter to do this in your calculator, you could enter this all into lists, um, 8 minus 10 is negative 2 and 5. Um, but the idea is all you want to do is create this difference column and then pretend that this is the data that you were given. So from this data, um, we could figure out what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. So I got the difference, maybe the mean of this difference and the standard deviation of the difference. Um, and I calculated those as the mean was 1.6. No, that can't be right. Yep, positive 1.6. And the standard deviation was 4.63. Um, and that'll be important to have. This will be the statistic, the stuff that we need to do this problem. So I want to state the null and alternative hypothesis. All right. All, all, <laughs> the null hypothesis we could write as this, that mu sub d is equal to zero. And the alternative hypothesis is that mu sub d, let's see, talking about the effect of underhand shooting here. So again, it'd be does not equal zero. Um, okay, and where mu sub d here is saying mu of the difference of this column here. So the difference between how many you'd make normally and underhanded. Calculate the test statistic. Okay, it's a t statistic because we had to estimate the standard deviation and what it's equal to is what we get for the difference this 1.6 minus what we'd expect just 0 divided by the standard deviation which is about 4.63 uh, divided by the square root of n which is 15 in this case and if you stick that into a calculator what you get is let's see 4.63 uh, divided by the square root of 15 is 1 point, 1.195. So 1 1.6 divided by that gives you 1.34. So we have a test statistic, 1.34. Sketch a graph. All right. That's this guy here. It's a two-tailed test. See, 95% confidence tells us that we have 2.5% is the area on this side. If you go to your t-table and figure out um, with, maybe I should have written this up top, since n equals 15, our degrees of freedom are equal to 14. So with 14 degrees of freedom, our critical value here is 2.145, which means that this is negative 2.145. And what that tells us 
is that our test statistic 1.345 is out here somewhere and it's not in the rejection region. So finally our conclusion would be similar to above because the test statistic is not in the rejection region there is not sufficient <laughs> there isn't sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis to reject the null hypothesis it's hard to write and talk um, but that's our conclusion so that's the end of the perfect problem